Hello everybody, Lawrence Fleming here again. Well, the weather is not too bad right now. I've got my long sleeve shirt on only because I started the day with it. It's a little later in the day. I wasn't going to do a topic on this, but I decided I'm going to go ahead and insert this topic in here now. And I've got people going by. I was looking around for a church to go to. I like little churches, and I couldn't find one in here because I'm back in the in the city. That's why I have cell signal. I think tonight I'm going to try to do a, a live broadcast with the laptop and see how that works. I always complain I can't see your messages, but if I put a laptop up and have it logged in too, then I can hopefully see both. All right, I've been talking about getting out and spreading the word. You know, if I lived in New York, maybe San Francisco, one of the big cities, you don't know your neighbor. I lived downtown Atlanta for a little while don't know my neighbors. You may see them if you're coming home the same time they are. But in general, you don't go knock on the door and say, hi, I'm your new neighbor. And that's sad. If you're in the country, you move in next to somebody, they may ride their horse over or dri drive their tractor over and leave you a pie or something. Stay and have a cup of coffee with you. City life is going to be tough, really tough, when everything hits. If you don't know your neighbor, I'm giving you a task, a task from God. Know your neighbor soon. Get out there, go next door, and just say hi. If you see them in the backyard, make it a point to go out into your backyard and say hi over the fence. How are you doing? What kind of work do you do? You know, small talk, get acquainted. You might have some things in common because you're going to have to rely on that neighbor or that neighbor may have to rely on you soon. So don't put it off. And you say, well, I can't go door to door and talk to people. Well, in a week, you're going to send your kids out to do that. Most people will. Uh, get back in my, my chair here. Halloween is coming up in a little over a week. I think eight days, if I remember, on my calendar. Whatever it is, it's close. Kids go door to door. They go to door door to door to collect bribes. Essentially, that's what Halloween is. Give us candy and we won't trash your house or whatever else they might want to do. So you're being you're bribing the kids to go away and leave you alone. What you could do is have the kids. I you know if if the little kids you go with them. If they're older kids, they can probably handle themselves if they're in a group. But hand out a tract or hand out a... I have the full-size tracts, but I also have the little business card type. And just hand it out and just say, just want to let you know that God loves you and hand them a, a card. Look at this at your leisure. Thank you for helping out with the kids in Halloween. It's become a, well, Halloween initially was an evil day, all Hallow's Eve, but it's it's become just a playful day, just sort of like Christmas has become a playful day, where it's no longer about Christ, it's just about family getting together and, and that. Use it. God uses evil stuff all the time. 
for his benefit. He doesn't start it, he doesn't create it, he doesn't even like it, but he'll use it. <clears throat> we can do the same thing. So you don't have to be a Mormon or a Jehovah Witness to go door to door. You do it for Halloween. You've got one day a year where you can do that. Dress up if you like, but, you know, what you dress up in is some kind of a problem sometimes. They're supposed to dress up in horrific costumes so that they can scare the owners. Well, most of them are cute. So, a fall festival would be better. But here's an opportunity for you to go to everybody's store. Think about it. I don't condone the pagan holiday, but it's an excuse to go door to door. Even if you're in an apartment complex, even if you're in, you know, a trailer park, wherever you're at, you can go door to door. And you don't have to have a reason. It's Halloween. Take the kids. They're your excuse. Now, I'm a little tongue-in-cheek on some of this, but you do this, people do this all the time without hesitation, without problems. You know, it can be done. So when you say, well, I can't go door-to-door -to, -door to pass out tracks or to talk to my neighbor, it's kind of a feeble excuse. Because this time of the year, they expect it. In fact, if you came with absolutely nothing but a track, they'd open the door for you anyway. Because they'd expect, if it's in the afternoon or evening of the 31st, they would expect somebody to ring the doorbell and would go there. They might even give you a piece of candy while you're there. But say hi. Find out what kind of work they do, what they do if you can talk to them at all. Now, if you're in a group of kids, they're all around you, you know, don't disrupt it. Say, so I'd like to come back if I could and talk about this. See, there's all kinds of opportunities. You just hand them the track and say, I'd love to be able to come back and talk to you about this. If they don't say no, you have an open invitation to do that on another day. Use the tricks of the trade. Talk to anybody who's gone door to door. You're going to have, it's just like a traveling salesman, the cliche type, you know, put your foot in the door. <laughs> some are successful, some aren't. It depends on, you know, how fast you can talk or what you say. You know, and obviously if you're seeking an audience to talk about God, they have to be ready to hear it. It doesn't take much for the average pagan to look around and see that the world is is falling, it's failing. Probably when they bought their 10 or 15 bags of candy that they bought <clears throat> and they had to pay twice as much as last year. They're going to notice or if it's, you know, if it's a party house and they had to buy their alcohol for the adults inside while they wait for the kiddies outside, they paid more for that too. So be aware of what they're aware of. And of course, the easiest way would be to just see them coming home when you're coming home or in their backyard. The birds are noisy this morning. I got a little bird on a tree. Oh, he was heading for the birdhouse. Birds inside were making noise too. I don't know what the. It's not. It's obviously not springtime. We're not even into winter yet, and it's still. It's cool, but it's warmer than it's been. I think we're going to get into the 70s today. So if the weather's nice on Halloween, Halloween, get out. Take your tracks with you. If you don't have any, you have time. Order them from Amazon. Pray about them. And pick the one that you like because you're going to have to talk about it and you've got time you can if you have them delivered in two or three days you got plenty of time take the track if you're not familiar with it look up the verses and practice your spiel 
Well, see here, John 3.16, I mean, let's talk about that. If you're afraid to talk to people, that's okay. Say, so here's a track, my husband would be by to come and talk to you, or my wife will come by and talk to you, whatever it is. Be the messenger. Be the angel, which is what angel means, messenger. So anyhow, you can do whatever you need to do this time of season because things are getting bad. Now, I don't know if you've noticed my subscriber count. It may have changed by the time you see this video, but <clears throat> it changes in the way it grows because of the filters and the restrictions that YouTube puts on it. And by topic matter, if we're in a high watch rapture time, then if I just mention the word rapture, I get more viewers than if I, if I don't. They're not full viewers. I mean, I, I can look at how many minutes are watched. Most people don't watch every video all the way through. I understand that. Because we don't have time. Make time, but if you're watching mine and somebody else's and somebody else's, you've only got so much time in the day. I understand that. You should like the video, even if you don't watch all of it. Just like it. It costs you nothing to click the like button. Most of my videos now, because they're fully monetized, have a thank you button at the top. And a few of you have contributed through that, and I want to thank you for that. I see you're going to have to watch my video at least into almost 12 minutes here to get that thank you. I have a number of people that help support this channel besides God setting me up with a steady income. I'm doing fine without working. I do miss some of it, but I don't miss working for Disney or I do miss my Marvel films, but I was in the first couple of episodes of She-Hulk. I don't know if you would have seen me in the audience in a courtroom, but I would have been there. And I do have a movie coming out on Halloween. I didn't know what it was when I signed up for it. It's kind of a tongue-in-cheek, uh, spooky movie. And the lady in it has the standard, traditional uh, Disney female voice. Now, I'm just playing a guard. I'm not. I'm not a monster. Although I was a walker on The Walking Dead. So, we're actors. We're not the characters that we play. Despite some people who want to worship their actors as if they were the character. They're not. They're good actors if you believe they are the character. So give them credit for that. Okay. I don't know how much I'm going to add to this. I do want to try a live video and I might try it. Uh, the e this evening, but it would have been over by the time you see this video. I want to test out, while I have a good signal here, what it would be like to uh, have my laptop and my phone both in use. So I can look on the laptop, and if I want to look something up, I can have stories there, things like that. I could use the camera on it, but I prefer to have uh, the laptop fully in my control and not responsible for the video as well. This is a perfectly good phone and it has a perfectly good camera because it's new. Tomorrow is moving day. It's one of the things I'm thinking about of how am I going to do this. I'm going to a site that is uh, another state park. It's on the top end of the Okefenokee Swamp. So I'm not sure. I've never been there before. I'm not sure what I'm going to run into, literally. Um, the Stephen Foster Park at the south end on the Florida border, we had alligators. I probably will have alligators at this one because it's on the north end. We also had bear. So I had to keep all my food in the car. Whenever you've got wild animals that like to come into camp and eat, even if they're raccoons, you've got to be careful because they are still wild animals, even though they're cute and cuddly. The bears are also cute and cuddly, but 
They're black bears. They're not big, gigantic ones, but they still, they want food. And if you've got it, they're prepared to attack you for it. They're prepared, prepared to tear apart your vehicle, your car, your truck, and for me, my tent, so I can't leave food around. When you get further north, the bears get even more aggressive, so you gotta really be careful. The best way to tell when you go to a park is if they have the bear trash cans. That's the kind you gotta stick your hand back in the top, grab the handle and open it up. You put your food in, it's like a mailbox, and you close it back, and the food spins around and drops in so the bears can't get to it. And they try, you know, if there's a new one in the area, they try, but they pretty real, realize that it's designed to keep them out. I've been backpacking and I've had to use a bear bag. That's where you take a rope, run across a couple of branches way high up, and then you throw another rope over the top of that in the middle and you hang a bag from it and tie it off at a tree. The only way for the bear to get it is to get out his little umbrella and walk on the rope, the tightrope. And most of them aren't circus trained, so they can't do that. But some places it's really, really bad. You've got to find out from the park rangers if you're in an area where you know they're bear. I mean, if you cook, if I were to cook on this shirt, it's going to smell like the fire. But it's also going to smell like the food I cooked. So after you cook, you take your shirt off. And if it's still cold, you put another one on. And you put the shirt in the bear bag. <clears throat> These animals have good senses. They're better at sensing things than we are in, in many ways. About the only thing I can smell is dinner, so... All right. I may throw a couple of verses with this, but basically it's just, just get out. Go help. Get to know your neighbors. It's going to be tough. And I don't know when the rapture is. As I was saying, it's interesting to note that my subscriber count was 2022. I read that as a good, good clear sign that something big, major big, is going to happen in 2022. Is it the rapture? It would be great if it was. It could be the start of World War III. It could be the Magog War. <clears throat> it's not going to be the appearance of the Antichrist, not if we're still here. But it could be any of the things that lead up to that. Revelation 12 says he's going to come after the, the child. Well, that's us. Well, that would be a good way to welcome in you know, the rapture, which is right after that. That's where the word harpazo is used, definitely, in Revelation 12. It's used in other spots for the same basic reason. But that's, that's the first one. We have three raptures. So that's why I tell you to plant seeds for the slow folks who just aren't willing to commit. If you're a Christian, great. I think I've got a video coming up that I'm going to basically maybe bore you, or I don't know. I'm going to basically make the whole video about why you should be a Christian. And I'm going to kind of gear it towards those that aren't. So if you've got a non-Christian friend who's on the fence, you can get him to watch something like this. You can also use it as a tool. If you don't know how to talk to people about being a Christian, I'm going to try to include the tools for that. Otherwise, if you're already a Christian, you should be familiar with pretty much everything I'm going to talk. So I'm working on that now. I'm not, I don't write the things that I say when I'm talking like this. This isn't written down. If I'm giving you scriptures, I write those down because I have to know where to turn to in the, in the book. I put bookmarkers in for all the scripture I read, so I'm not wasting your time going, where is that? I know it's here someplace. Occasionally I forget, and you see me do that. 
but right now I'm just I'm just talking off the cuff like where we're sitting in a campsite and I got a campfire right in front of me Roosevelt used to call him his campfire chats I think is what he called them just sit and talk frankly we're going to talk about God I can talk to you till you get bored and I probably do I do have to repeat a lot of things because there's only so many basic story guidelines to follow in the Bible. Remember, mine's called the end times. Occasionally I do go back and look at the beginning. But I have a different point of view on the beginning than traditional preachers. I'm either part of the gap theory or I'm a separate version of it. I'm not uh, talking about um, evolution at all. Although there is God-inspired evolution even today. You can see it on animals on different continents that are close to each other. There's different species that are related. That's evolution. But it's not random. It's not roll the dice and see what we get. Throw these 15 million chemicals together and while all we got life and then it crawls up out of the sea. No, that's all Satan's lie. But if God does it because he wants to change something, it's still evolution, but it's God managed, controlled. So I think the earth is as old as the scientists say it is, but I'm not going to go into that right now. But he could have created the earth in six days if he wanted to. But that doesn't follow the laws of physics. It doesn't follow the laws of giving us something real. You'd have to put the, the dinosaur bones in the ground. They could not have lived. They could not have walked the earth. Because there's evolution in the dinosaurs. But it's God controlled. It's not random. If it were random, we'd have refrigerators growing on trees. I still keep hearing them knocking these Nuts down. I hear them on the roof when I'm trying to sleep. Thud. Roll, 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 and it goes off the edge. Because there's a big tree right above the side of the house that I'm staying in. Now, I'm going to get back out in the wilderness starting tomorrow. I'll have to go borrow my storage unit and load up everything. I also have to load my camera gear because I'm going to be filming a independent film the first weekend in November. And I'm probably coming back here where i got to figure out where I'm going. I am beginning to think I'm going to have to... I think I'm just going to talk for this video. And, you know, John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Everybody has seen John 3.16, especially if they're sports fans. Because I used to be that guy when I was growing up out in right field, I guess it was. Had the multicolor hair, and he had John 3.16 out there as a banner. Everybody got to see it. Now, did it help everybody? No, but it helped those that needed to be helped. Okay? That's the thing. You can't help the world most of the world is going to perish. Sad. They have a free gift of life and they're going to turn it down because Satan is so good at lying. But even during the millennium where Satan is locked up, most of the people are going to turn from God. A thousand years is about how long it takes to turn from God. And then Satan will come back and lead them into the final battle, but you can't blame it all on Satan. We have a sin nature. It's natural for us to sin. Not as Christians. We have to fight to sin. You have to really ignore all the bells going off. So you have to be very deliberate about it as a Christian. Non-Christians don't even have to give it a second thought. They just go ahead and sin. Most of them think that it's 
perfectly okay and that they're going to still go to heaven because they're they're not that bad. <laughs> All of sin and come short of the glory of God. There won't be any excuses. Every human being that's not a Christian is going to go to the white judgment, white throne judgment, and that is going to show them their life. You see when you did this? You see when you did that? That's not a good thing. Oh, well, I only did it once a week. <laughs> or, well, I had to steal that money because I was overdrawn and I, I, I didn't want my family to starve. You can't fix a bad problem with another bad problem. More than likely, if you've got a problem with finances, you go to your creditors and you tell them, if they don't want to work with you, then you go to a credit agency that help people with bad credit. And they will take over. Now, if the bank is playing hardball, a lot of times they do that just to make sure that you really are in dire straits. But don't, you know, don't let the first one talk, ask to talk to a manager, ask to talk to somebody else. Give them a chance and tell them, if they don't do it, you're going to go to a credit agency and let them help. And they know that when you do that, they'll be lucky if they get 10 cents on the dollar. Most businesses will work with you. If they don't, then they deserve 10 cents on the dollar. But don't get into trouble in the first place. The only reason we go into debt is to have something that we don't have the money for. Now, we have a couple of options that we have to, you know, we need a place to stay. And buying a house can be, you know, you have to borrow money to buy a house. Most people. That would be, you know, a, a decent investment that I wouldn't complain about. But you got to get a new car. Why? Because your old one's wearing out. Cars can become money pits. So can houses if you get an old one. But you don't have to have a brand new $50,000 car or one that's noisy. Oh, that's not a car. That's a motorcycle. One's okay, but 50 of them, I'd have had to stop my video. You can still hear it in the background. Smaller engines compared to, I got a spider on my camera. I've never been into street bikes. I've always had dirt bikes. Where's that spider? Get it back, get it, get it, get it. It's a distraction, that's all I get rid of it for. Okay, so. We are getting close to something really big. I don't know what it's going to be. But it will probably scare you and the world. Step back from it and say, Thank you, God, that you're still taking care of me. We are not subject to wrath, as somebody pointed out. But wrath... And tribulation are two different things. In this life you will have tribulation. But we are not subject to wrath, to God's wrath. Satan, he's got plenty of wrath. So, how much are we going to have to put up with? That's the key. Be preparing yourself. Store up on your food. If nothing more, right now, if you just started storing up when I told you to, You'd be saving on your grocery bill right now. We have our election on the 7th next month. I would guess pretty much everything is going to rock it up. Yes, certainly. It came down for the election. Our fearless leader says I put, what, 15 million barrels out of the reserve. 
which is almost empty. I don't remember when it's ever been that low. Now, you can go find it online someplace, but it's probably been 40, 50 years at least. Many different administrations through many different crises. I don't remember it being this low. He's just giving it away. He even sold some to some of our enemies. Why? It's the harlot. Don't blame our fearless leader. At this point in time, he's little more than a puppet. He doesn't even know where he is half the time. He needs to be in an old politician's home someplace. But they got him up there because he still can barely read a teleprompter, but he can read it. And he probably thinks he's doing the right thing. He may not even have a clue what all is going on. You know, remember MASH? Again, I'm going to do my TV reference. Radar would come in and give him a stack of paper to sign. I, start, I, I, I worked a couple of episodes on the first, uh, first three years of it. Nothing big. But uh, Radar would come in and the, the Clayne Stevens played the Play the uh, commander there. Radar. Who played? Who played Radar? I'll think of his name here in a bit. Burgoff. So anyhow, he comes in and McLean Stevens is signing away and he goes, What's this for? Okay, well this is the signature to authorize the signature that you just signed so that we can get a stamp so you don't have to sign the next time. You know, it's typical government. And what's this one for? Well, we're, we're trying to get more toilet paper and they couldn't recognize the uh, the number, so I'm sending them a sample. And there's like three sheets of toilet paper hanging off the order. Yeah, typical government. If you've ever worked in the military or any place for government, you know that they don't always hire the smartest people in certain jobs. All right. Well, be ready. I think something major is going to happen in the next week or two. My number turning over to 2022, now it might be 2023 or 2040 by the time you get to it, it doesn't matter. It just turned over and I just said, God, I'm watching this number. Make it happen to tell me something's going to happen still this year. We've got a couple of months left. And we have two major elections in the world. Well, a third, if you want to call it. Uh, Britain as well. They need a replacement again. I think she's got the record of the shortest term of any woman prime minister or whatever. It's not easy, especially when you find out that when you get in there, they have your agenda written out. This is where we're going. This is where we're taking the government. And these are the things you're going to say and back. If you don't do it, we have lots of one-way tickets to going anywhere in the world, and we'll put you on one of them. And you may be alive, you may not be. This harlot that's out there is not playing games. If you don't play along, they threaten you. Remember when Ross Perot was running, and all of a sudden he backed out? about our Supreme Court Justice who allowed Obamacare in, even though his vote was technically illegal, but he approved it and let it go through. And he was not, he was talking about not doing it, and all of a sudden, boom, he switched. They got to him. There's still lots of places to put bodies in the desert. I talked about that before, too. These people are playing for keeps. So don't, don't push them unless you're well aware of what you're doing. The time for martyrs is after we're out of here. But I think we don't have to do any, to anything really that bad yet. Just get the word out. Okay.
I'm going to release this one, I think, tomorrow. I'm going to probably try to release the one on evangelism and, and how to be out there talking to people and helping people, helping save souls. It's not up to you to save. It's up to the Spirit, but you've got to be the, the front runner. Take the message. Okay. Moving day tomorrow. Back to camping. At least it's warming up a little bit. And I have my new winter sleeping bag, so I'm happy as a clam. Bye for now. God bless.